Hello friends, good morning. In my previous lecture, I had started with the non-destructive testing of the electrical equipments and insulations. Non-destructive testings are performed to assess the quality of the insulation as well as to detect any defect in the insulation or electrical equipment. Now there are three parameters which assess the quality of the insulation. They are insulation resistance, also called as DC resistivity, second is capacitance and third is N delta that is loss angle. And to detect any defect in the insulation or electrical equipment, we perform the partial discharge test. So they detect any if there is any cavity or void in the insulation and give, give the idea about the health of the insulation. Now in this video lecture, I will explain how to determine insulation resistance or how to find insulation resistance that is DC resistivity of the insulation or electrical equipment. Now to find the resistance, simple method is we apply the voltage, we pass the current through the resistance, we measure the current and V upon I that gives the resistance of the component or whatever device we are using, it gives the resistance of that device or that component. But when we say insulation resistance, it is very very high, it is in the range of few hundreds or thousands of mega ohms. So, in order to pass the current, we require very high voltage. Now, if this voltage is very very high, then in place of getting the insulation resistance, there is possibility that insulation gets damaged. In non-destructive non testing, we are restricting the voltage up to 10 kV, maximum 10 kV around that, so that no destruction is caused to the equipment or insulation. Therefore, the name is non-destructive testing. So, we have to restrict the applied voltage to around 10 kV and even when we apply the 10 kV voltage, the current passing through is very very small that is in the range of nano amperes or pico amperes. So, we need sensitive device or very sensitive emitter to measure this current. There are, there are, therefore, there are two different specific techniques to measure the insulation resistance or DC resistivity. So, first I will explain how the specimen is prepared and how is the electrode arrangement. Now, here I have shown the electrode arrangement and the specimen. This is called as three electrode arrangement. So, this is the specimen that is normally in the shape of, in this in circular shape because the electrodes are also of circular shape. This is, these are three electrodes. Upper one is high voltage electrode. This inside electrode is called as measuring electrode or earth electrode. And surrounding this measuring electrode at the corners is shown guard electrode. So these electrodes are flat, electrodes are flat, plain, plate circular shape electrode. Diameter is 5, 5 cm to 10 cm and the thickness is 3 to 12 mm. So circular electrode is there, this is upper one circular electrode. Below this there is specimen that is also circular. Then there is outer ring that is called as guard electrode and then there is inner flat measuring electrode also called as earth electrode. And gap between this guard electrode and earth electrode is very small that is in the range of few mm. Now there is one requirement that is thin metallic film of aluminium or lead of 20 micro, micrometer thickness cover the high voltage electrode and this is provided in order to make better contact between the high voltage electrode and the specimen. So this is the electrode arrangement. Now question is why we require three electrode arrangement? Two electrode arrangement will also serve the purpose but if we use three electrode arrangement that will give precise reading. The reason is we have to measure the current flowing through this insulation. Now, when we make this type of arrangement, there is possibility that current flows over the edges of this specimen. So, if current is measured, if current is flowing over the edges of this insulation and that is also measured for calculation purpose, then it will give the error in reading. Therefore, we are using this guard electrode. So, whatever current is flowing over the edges of this insulation, that is bypassed and that is not 
flowing through this emitter. Therefore, the current which is flowing through this specimen only that is measured. So, therefore, three electrode arrangement is always better than two electrode arrangement. Now, let us see the methods. Now, let us see the first method for finding the DC resistivity that is insulation resistors. I will name this method as galvanometer method because we are using galvanometer in this method. So, this is the test arrangement. We require voltage, voltmeter to measure this voltage, two way switch, then this is three terminal test arrangement, this is the specimen RP, this is high voltage electrode, it is going to a high voltage point, this is ground or measuring electrode and this is the guard electrode. So, this is three terminal test arrangement, three terminal electrode arrangement and this is the specimen. Now, in the first part of this method, we have to determine the sensitivity of this galvanometer. For determining the sensitivity of the galvanometer, we are using standard resistance that is that has value from between 1 to 10 megaohms. So, RS is standard resistor or standard strength having magnitude of 1 to 10 megaohms. If required, we use universal strength ratio let us say it is N. So, first we keep this standard shunt here, we connect this point at point number 1, so that this standard resistance gets connected here, then we find, we pass the current, we find the deflection in the galvanometer, let us say DS is the deflection in galvanometer with resistor RS that is standard resistor and this deflection is in centimeter. So, Sensitivity of the galvanometer that is unit of amperes per centimeter is determined by this equation. It is applied voltage divided by this standard strength divided by multiplied by 1 upon n. n is the universal strength ratio multiplied by 1 upon ds. ds is deflection in the galvanometer with the standard register. So, first we determine the sensitivity of the galvanometer. Unit is amperes per centimeter. Then we remove this shunt and we connect the test object, that is test specimen. First, we connect this, we have connected this standard resistance, but we have not connected this specimen. Then we remove this standard resistance and we connect the test specimen. And then we connect this point here so that current passes through this. So, initially, we wait for some time so that charging current flows through this and this is completely charged. So, after the current settles to some value, then we find the deflection in this galvanometer. Let us say D is the deflection in galvanometer with the test sample or test specimen. We are denoting this resistance of the test specimen by RP. RP is this resistance of the insulation resistance of the test sample and D is the corresponding deflection. Then RP resistivity of the specimen will be V upon D into G. V is the applied voltage, D is the deflection with RP and G is the sensitivity of the galvanometer. This is in ohms. So, this is the formula for RP and after the test is complete, we connect this point here so that whatever charges are there, they are going to the ground. Means we have to, for precautionary, as a precautionary measure or for safety, of the operating personnel, we have to discharge the test sample so that if there is any residual charge, it does not harm the operating personnel. Then if you want to find the volume resistivity, let us say rho is the volume resistivity, then Rp is rho into T upon A, where this rho is volume resistivity of this sample, T is the thickness of this sample and area of area of, area of this test sample. So, in this way, we determine the insulation resistance or DC resistivity of this test sample by galvanometer method. Now, I will explain the second method that is loss of charge method for determining the sensitivity of determining the resistance or volume resistivity of the specimen.
second is loss of charge method. In this method, a capacitor which is previously charged to some high voltage is allowed to discharge through the test sample. Now the time required by this capacitor to discharge to some specific value of the voltage is noted. And that time and that voltage they are taken for calculation purpose. The procedure is like this. First, we connect this capacitor to this voltage source. We allow this capacitor to charge to some voltage. Normally, it is equal to the applied voltage. So, V0 is the initial voltage to which this capacitor is charged. So, once the capacitor is fully charged to voltage V0, then this point is connected to 2. So, when it is connected to 2, this capacitor starts discharging through this high resistance. This is insulation resistance. This is the voltmeter to measure the voltage across this capacitor. So, time is measured for at which we, we want to discharge this capacitor to voltage. Normally, it is half voltage. So, if this capacitor is initially charged to voltage 1000 volts, then we allow this capacitor to discharge to voltage 500 volts, means half the, half the voltage. And corresponding time in seconds is noted. So, Vt is the voltage after time t seconds. That is taken for the calculation purpose. Then this is the formula for the capacitor voltage. Vt is equal to V0 e to the power minus t upon Rp to C. C is the capacitance of this capacitor. So, if we take the log of natural log, the, sorry, natural log, then we get this. If we want to replace, remove this negative sign, then we have to reverse this. So, it will become V0 upon Vt when it is T. So, finally, from this equation, we get Rp is equal to T upon C into Ln V0 upon Vt. And if we want to find the volume resistivity, then we use this formula Rp is rho T upon A. Volume resistivity is measured in ohms centimeter. So, in this way, we measure this insulation resistance or DC resistivity by loss of charge method. But in this method, there is one error that is source of error because this capacitor is also having its own resistance, which we are not assuming here. We are assuming that that resistance is not coming in the circuit, but actually that resistance is coming in the circuit. Though that resistance is very, very high, these two resistances will become, will come in parallel. And finally, whatever value of resistance we are getting, insulation resistance, we are getting here, that is the parallel combination of these two. Therefore, we get some error in the measurement when we are using this method, that is loss of charge method. So, these are the two methods for measuring the insulation resistance or DC resistivity of the insulation. Friends, if you feel this video lecture useful, then please like it, subscribe to my channel, ask your friends, colleagues and your juniors to subscribe to my channel for upcoming video lectures on high voltage engineering and power system protection. If you want to make effective and efficient use of time, then read my book on time management link for the book is given in the description box. I will launch a useful course for the students on Udemy. This course is very useful for the students who are preparing for entrance and competitive exams. The link for the course is also given in the description box. In my next video lecture, I will solve a numerical for computing the insulation resistance by these two methods. Thank you.